We were on the edge. The international financial system was on the edge. So he went out there and he did one of the most unpopular things, but necessary things. He said, we're going to fix TARP, make it work, and we're going to spend the money. And we're going to bail out the financial system. He went out and said, I'm not going to let the American <coughs> oil industry go under and be liquidated. And it would have been liquidated. On time, other companies would have bought pieces of it, but it wouldn't have been liquidated. And he also came up with the first thing out of the box before we literally, we walked in after the inaugural parade. And we both, he said, come on into the Oval. First time in the Oval by himself, sat behind the desk. And he said, you know, I think we bought in too high. It would be better had we been, in fact, inaugurated on March the 20th, because like it used to be, because everyone would have known exactly how bad things were. So what's the first thing we had to do? We had to go out and come up with $787 billion in stimulus. Had we not done that, this place would have cratered. Everybody said, my Republican friends said, well, business would have come in. Give me a break. <laughs> Who had money to get in? Who was going to invest anything in that time period? And look at it now. Banks are flush, $2 trillion. Bucks. They're not lending anything. Corporate America, I come from the corporate state of America. Corporate America is flush, $1.79 trillion they have in their coffers. They're not bad guys, they're good guys. But they're not investing in anything. And there's a whole reason for that. The reason for that is that they're worried that there's nobody out there to buy what they're going to produce, what they're going to expand, the products they have. There is a, there, there is a circumstance where Right now, we sort of got the car back on level ground, but man, it's only chugging along at 15, 20 miles an hour, man. It needs a lot of work, this engine. And in the meantime, I don't have to tell any of you guys, there's a lot of people hurting, hurting really, really badly. Bob and I grew up not far from one another. We went to the same high school. He knows my family, and he knows where I used to live when I was in Claymont, Delaware, before we went to, when we went to high school. And during the recession, the people sitting around my dad's dining room table, his brother, his sister, his cousins, my mother's brothers, everybody knew on that table someone was going to lose their job. Somebody was going to lose their job. Most of the people in our business have not had to worry about losing their job, about losing part of their income, about losing a little bit, but not having to fundamentally alter the lifestyle. There's millions of people who've had it. My dad used to say, and Larry knew my dad well, my dad used to say, my dad was just a gentle, decent man, a gentle man, a high school education, and a classy guy. And my dad used to say, Joey, a job's about a lot more than passion. It's about your dignity. It's about respect. It's about your place in the community. It's about being able to turn to your kid and say, honey, it's going to be okay. have lost their dignity, lost their sense of self, are not able to look at the kids and say it's going to be okay. Matter of fact, look at the polling data, they're worried, they don't think it's going to be okay. Not only for their kids now, but when their kids are their age, they don't think it's going to be okay. Some of you have heard me say the longest walk a parent can possibly make is up a short flight of stairs to his kid's bedroom. And they say, honey, I'm sorry, but you can't go to St. Michael's, you can't go to Cooper's School, you can't go back to Archer, or you can't go back to college this semester. Dad lost his job. Mom lost her job. And the bank, the bank, honey, owns our house. It's lost so much value. We can't stay. My dad, I remember, I was going into fourth grade. I remember him walking up the stairs in my grandfather's home, sitting in the guest bedroom where we were living, and saying, Joey, Got to move to Wilmington, Frank is. Because there's jobs there. There's no jobs here, sir. And it's going to take me about a year. I'll come home every weekend if I can. I think I'll be able to. And when I get enough money, I'm going to take you and Mom and Valerie and Judy, and we're going to go down to Wilmington. I'm going to get enough money together. Well, I thought that was pretty tough, but I, he said it's going to be okay, so I believe it. Wait until I got to be between 25 and 30, I realized the longer walk he made was in my grandfather Ambrose Finnegan's pantry. 
to say to my grandfather, my dad, as you remember, was a proud man. And he looked, to look at my grandfather with my mom's four brothers, actually three, three brothers, and say, Ambrose, can you do me a favor? Can you take care of Gene? Can you take care of the kids? I promise you I'll make it right. It's a hard, God darn business. I mean, dad to do. Think of all the people in the neighborhood you grew up in who have had to do that. So guys, I want to just get it down to a simple combination. Barack and I are running to achieve one objective, and I mean this sincerely. It's a lot more complicated than the objective, but it's a simple, straightforward objective. We want middle class people, moms and dads, to be able to look their kids in the eye and say, honey, it's going to be okay. And mean it. And mean it. Wall Street Journal.